Well, welcome back. The city of Philadelphia is reeling in the aftermath of two straight nights of lootings throughout the city this week. More than 60 people have been arrested so far in connection to this ransacked businesses, which included liquor stores as well as a Lululemon footlocker Apple store. Meanwhile, Target is joining the growing list of big retailers shutting down doors in major Democrat-run cities, closing nine stores because of safety concerns and theft. In the second quarter alone, Target lost more than $200 million worth of inventory. New numbers from the National Retail Federation show that retail theft is at a record high, totaling $112 billion last year alone. That's up from $94 billion in 2021. Joining me right now is the former vice chairman of Target, Jerry Storch, back with us. Jerry, thanks very much for being here. This is increasingly a major problem, and now these companies are calling it shrink. That is the loss of inventory because of all of this theft. How do you see things? Uh, it's terrible, frankly, and it's accelerating. Uh, we work so hard at every retailer I've been at to put these stores in these very difficult trade areas. It's so critical for the community. They provide food, access to pharmacies. You know, it's such an important service. Otherwise, all that's left is mom and pop sh sh uh, shops that charge too much and don't have the products consumers want. And then you have, have people come in and rob them and make it so bad that you have to close these stores. I've seen some people ridiculously say, oh, you know, the insurance covers it. Oh, they don't have to close these stores. They just don't want to be there for some, some other reason. Trust me. When Target's closing stores, when Walmart closed stores in Chicago, when Nordstrom closed a major store in San Francisco, they're doing it because they're losing so much money and their employees are at so much personal risk that they have no choice. Jerry, is there any way to track the items being stolen and then, uh, you know, attack those uh, platforms? In other words, if people are stealing massive TVs and then selling them on Amazon, can't Amazon do something about it? Uh, absolutely. And there's been a lot of work in this area. One of the biggest reasons why this theft has increased is because of the Internet and the easy fenceability, you know, uh, turning these items into cash. Uh, you know, with with these marketplaces. So there's been new legislation. They are, are cracking down on this. But still, the crooks are also always one step ahead. Of you. They're very smart. So they do things like change serial numbers on products. You know, it's organized crime. And so it's very difficult to track the goods at the end of the day. Often there's a multi-tier distribution system. The person who stole it is obviously committing a crime. They sell it to someone who knows it's stolen, but then they sell it to someone who doesn't know it was stolen, who's the one who puts it on the marketplace. So it's not as easy as it might seem at first glance, but that's why we need more money and more focus on this. It's like fighting any organized crime. That's what it is. Yeah, and, you know, there aren't any consequences for these folks who are doing all of this stealing. That's one of the issues. They know well, that they can get away with it. That's right. Here is a case yeah. where, you know, they say, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Here's a case where they're doing the crime and they're not doing the time. They're getting away That's with right. it. Uh, local prosecutor, local prosecutors, legislatures have said, oh, it's nothing. It's just petty theft. Let them get away with it. They need to feed their family. Well, you don't need to feed your family with an iPad or Lululemon. You know, this is organized crime is what it is. That's terrible. And meanwhile, yeah. look at the con these stores cost millions of dollars to build. In the case of a Target store or a Walmart, you know, over $10 million just to put the store there. This isn't a small consequence for the community or for these retailers or for anyone. It's in the yeah. Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. But they're allowed to steal and get away with it. That's right. Jerry, before you go, let me get your sense of where we are in the macro story and consumer spending. We're about a week and a half uh, from third quarter reporting earnings. So we will see what businesses have to say about uh, what they think about the fourth quarter in 2024. How does the holiday look to you and what are you seeing in terms of consumer spending right now? Well, Maria, I've known you a long time and you know I'm an optimist. Having said that, I think we're headed towards a very difficult holiday season. When you strip out inflation, retail sales of physical products, of things, have been negative now for 11 straight months. And I expect that trend to continue. People say the consumer's healthy. I honestly don't know what they're talking about. They point to the services number, the increase there. But most of that services increase is not cruises and hotels, you know, and restaurants eating out. Most of the increase is people having to pay higher rent or higher medical bills. So actually, the consumer is getting more and more leveraged. You know, debt's, debt has increased, defaults have increased, 
you know, it, it, uh, you know, the student loans are going to come due. Uh, it isn't looking great, frankly, for retailers who sell products for the holiday season. Wow. All right. Well, what uh, a, a sad situation in terms of what we're looking at here as interest rates go higher and oil prices are also an issue. Jerry, thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. Good to see you.